God bless you. We're uh, welcoming you to this uh, series of testimonies that we're giving for the glory of God. We've been uh, realizing that Jesus said that in the last days that he'll pour out his spirit upon all flesh, and we know that that is being fulfilled. But Jesus also said that he was the vine and we are the branches, and if the branch or the vine brings forth another branch, it'll be just like the first. Well, we believe that we are a books of that. Book of Acts Church and that this is nothing but a continuation of the Book of Acts. Tonight we have Brother Jean Pobu and he will be giving his testimony of what God's done for him and it's a great honor and privilege to have this young man sitting here tonight. And We trust that whatever Brother Jean has on his heart will be a tremendous blessing and strength to you. We've had sort of like what we call a revival within our young people, within the church, and within individuals and families altogether. And we trust that these testimonies will continue to be not only a blessing in our local assembly, but to you and to whoever you affect. So I'd like to again introduce Brother Jean Povu, and uh, he's gonna speak to us regarding what God's been doing for him. Brother Jean, it's a great pleasure to have you tonight. Thank you. We appreciate you and what God's done in your life and the effect of it so quickly as you have come to the church over the last year and a half or two. And your effect of your life has been a blessing, not only here, but it's touching lives around the world. And uh, we'd like to share with these, with these people, the, the saints, what God has done for you, Brother John. It's all been supernatural, and we're thankful to the Lord that he's led you here. And many people don't know how, where you came from or how you got here, but please take your time and, and uh, share your testimony with us. Right, thank you. Uh, I was born in the message, born in Congo, Brazzaville. Okay. And um, as a young child, I just love being in church, especially for the songs, because I just love music. Mm. I remember the first memory I have from church is going to church and sit, sitting there, singing the songs, and then sleeping during the preaching and waking up for the songs. So that wow. was why I was going to church. Uh -huh. When I was seven years old, my dad moved from Congo to Zimbabwe for work. And then uh, we started attending a church there. I think you know Brother Jeremiah. Yes. We started att attending his church. And then, uh, but they were preaching in the, in the local language, which is Shona, I think. Okay. Sometimes they're preaching in English, sometimes they're preaching Shona. So there, I didn't know English yet, just trying to learn a little bit. It was quite hard to understand. Mm -hmm. But there was an evangelist, I think it was from Cameroon, who used to come every single Sunday at our house to hold prayer meetings. And then by when I was 11 years old, that's where I was really, really touched. Hmm. And uh, he spoke about the rapture. He spoke about getting baptized. He said, if you don't get baptized and feel the Holy Ghost, you miss the rapture. And I realized that <laughs> I, I need to get baptized. So I, I got baptized. And my first contact with God came at that point of my life. I was reading the book of Matthew. Right. At 11 years old, I, I read the whole book of Matthew. And when I got to the story of the passion of Jesus Christ, how he died for our sins, that spoke to me. And I remember having a tremendous experience mm. then at that, at that age, just crying to God and realizing that he died for our sins and, and not understanding why Judas was chosen to betray him. I wouldn't want to be in that position. Right. So I got baptized and I remember when I came out of the baptismal tank, I, just, I was filled with faith. Mm. I just knew that God was real. Mm. But there wasn't uh, any sealing or feeling of the Holy Ghost. Okay. I just had an experience. Mm -hmm. And there was no difference in my life because I was just living a normal, a normal life, not a sinful life, just a normal life, mm -hmm. going to school and doing homework, or watching cartoons sometimes. That was, that's all I knew. But when we moved back to Congo in 2002, uh, went back to school and then I was just living a normal, you know, normal life, so to say. There wasn't any worldly activities I was going into. Uh, there was nothing sure. like that. But uh, when I was 14, I went into a service, it was on Wednesday night, and the preacher spoke on the winds of the revival. Hmm. I'll never forget that message. Mm -hmm. That was in 2005, sure. March, March 2005. Okay. I was really, really touched, and the presence of the Lord was so strong. He was just talking about how, how the wind of the Holy Spirit came to uh, in the upper room, the Day of Pentecost, mm -hmm. and taking every single revival throughout history, every single church age. And then, he was talking about the revival in the church. I was really touched by that. At the end, shaking people's hands, I was just 
crying. I remember my sister asking me, why are you crying? I right. know the service was great, but I could not, could not explain the joy. But something happened in my heart that day. I don't know what it was, but there was a greater love for God. There was a desire for God. There was a change. Mm -hmm. there was, it was a definitely new heart. So uh, from there, I just started reading my Bible, taking my Bible to school and reading my Bible every single day. Uh, but then, 14, 15 years old, my dad moved back again. He was sent back to Zimbabwe again for work. Okay. So then we went back there again. I didn't want to go because of my previous experience there, not knowing where to fit on the word, if I'll be able to understand everything. And but still, we went there, and uh, we started going to church. At some point, I just got tired of it, and I, and, I, and I stopped going to church. My brother stopped going to church. Sometimes we would go to church, sometimes we wouldn't go to church. But that's when I started reading message books. Because if I can't go to church, I can't right. do all the say. I'll just stay right. home and listen to a table read message books. So I was just reading lots and lots, lots hmm. of message books. I think in that year, I read about six or 100 message books. And you're 14. Oh, well, I was 15 then. 15, incredible. So I just had a love, a love for hmm. the word. Marvelous. But just growing up and still have no experience until uh -huh. I was. Well, I had several experiences, but I didn't have a walk, as I know it now, right, to right. have a walk with God. We've heard that Enoch walked with God, like every Christian should have a walk with God. But wha what is a walk with God? Sure. I didn't even know what was a walk with God. Is it uh, praying every single day? I didn't have a relationship with the person, the person of Christ. Right, right. I didn't know he was, I knew about his word, but I could talk to him, but I had no relationship with him, like I build a relationship with my friends now. Mm. So. And I know God was true. I know God was real. God was right. alive. I've seen it people's life. I've seen change people's life. And, but I had never experienced in that sense where I could walk personally. with him personally. Yeah. So, and then education was a big, big part of my life, especially then. Because okay. I wanted to go into, uh, into more technical field, uh, maybe uh, computer science, okay. electronics. That's what I wanted to go to. But in my high school, I had to switch schools because they didn't offer that field in my high school. Mm -hmm. So I tried to apply for Canada then, it was 2006. But if, if for some reason it didn't work out. My so goodness. I decided to stay home, I was just reading, reading on the internet, just reading, reading, and I was consumed. I'll, I'll stay up till four o'clock in the morning, just reading, 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 reading. And that's probably what got me a little bit close, close, very close to my dad. Because wow. he, he saw that in me, the, the drive, the passion for knowledge, education. Yeah, yeah. So that this guy, if he can go far in school and get a PhD. Yeah. So we became quite, quite close, mm -hmm. very, very close. My dad and I have a special, special relationship mm. because of that, it basically. But then education became a great, great part of my life that he took away the God part of my life. I just wanted to know more, know more, know right. more. And I didn't want to yield now to what God wanted me to be or what God wanted ahead for me. I just wanted to, I had my own plans, my own goals set up, my own projects that I wanted to pursue. Mm -hmm. So I was so frustrated I couldn't go further in my education because I had a year I had to stay home because I couldn't go to Canada. So I stayed home just reading, reading, reading. Then I decided to go to Cape Town to, to study computer science there. And what age were you then? Then I was 17, 18. Okay. Then I, I, went, I went to Cape Town and then I studied computer science there, but went to church a couple of times, but really now slipping into the things of the world, mm. when the things mm -hmm. of the world. And mm -hmm. I even remember one day just being in the bar in the evening, just it was late at night, drinking and just thinking with myself, I'm in hell, this wow. is hell. And then right there looking around me, the whole atmosphere changed, seeing just people just dancing and everything. I literally feel that I'm, I'm in hell. And I started crying then. I just left in tears, Incredible. walked back home in tears, so where am I, Lord, where am I? So I really wanted to have something real. I want to have a walk with God, mm. but I just couldn't get it. And that was a frustration for me because I knew that God was real. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that, God, are you real? I knew he was real, right, but, but I couldn't real understand why can he be that real to me? Right. How can he get a hold of somebody's life change a person, transform the person completely, and hold that person. And then with me, it's just an experience now and then, now and then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was my, my frustration. Mm -hmm. So I told myself, well, if there's nothing I can get from that, so why live the life? Because then, until that point, I was kind of living the life, but having no life. Right. 
then I think that that's what having a form of godliness. Exactly, yeah. just living the life by having no life. I didn't have the Holy Ghost at all. Mm -hmm. So after that, I went to Australia, and I told myself, well, if there's if I can get the Holy Ghost, then what, there's no point." What was the draw to Australia? How did my it? my brother was in Australia studying. Okay. So my dad said, "Well, just stay in Cape Town for a year, do whatever you're doing in computer science, then I'm going to send you to Australia." Okay. So after Cape Town, I went to Australia. But my drive, when I went there, I knew that if I, can, if I cannot get the Holy Ghost, there's no point mm -hmm. staying in church. There's no point trying to live the life. I might as well just do whatever I want. Sure. So my, my intention was I'm going to go as far as I can from God. That's and I achieved that. I went away from God. Away from God. Uh, I stayed in Australia for about a year and a half, went to church twice. All that period, not going to church, no one to, no to have anything to do with God. Mm. But then God will always, always come down at, at some moments. I remember one day talking to a preacher back home. Mm -hmm. uh, he sent me an email and said, I, I saw you in the vision and you turned your back on the Lord. I said, well, that's true. I've turned my back on the Lord, but there's no, there's no turning back. I'm not coming back. But it wasn't that I didn't want God. It was that I, I didn't want to have an experience and go back in the world again. Right. That was the cycle of my whole life, right. and I didn't want that. Right. So I don't want a God who can save. I know he can save. I want somebody who can save and keep me. Amen. So I, I don't want to just have an experience. I, say, I told myself, if I'm ever to come back to God, it has to be for the last time and forever. Right. I'm not, there's no turning back. It was a very tough decision to make. Call my dad and say, I'm done with school. I'm going back to Africa. No way. The darkest part of my life, or period of time of my life, no experience, no dream, nothing, no, not even a touch from God. So I knew that God was wanting me to make a decision. And it was a very tough decision to make. You know, I look to my left, look to my right. I'm asking myself, who are these people? Where am I? I say, whatever they have, I know this is what I need. 